Yozora. All right, so hey, I'm Cole from Talk of the Town, and today we have Jungle Ty from Who's Outside, and we're gonna just talk hip hop. So tell yeah. the people a little bit about Who's Outside and what you guys do and things like that. Okay, so Who's Outside is a interview podcast and a promotion platform for artists. Um, I'm somebody who's been in the game doing, helping artists promote and work and gain notoriety, going to whatever next level that they want to go to for like last 10 years. I uh, started with a company called Jungle State, where I did national collegiate music competitions, had artists battling, um, had Joe Budden host the first like big national collegiate music competition with Seton Hall versus Rutgers. Um, and then I just been working around. So then probably about 2019, 2020, we started to write like a show up. The original show was called The Scorecard, but it was too like, I'm a nerd, it was too numbery. We tossed that out. And we wrote up Who's Outside because the premise of Who's Outside was me noticing all the artists that I've ever worked with, all the people that I've ever successful people I've met. When you hear the key to their stories, it, nine times out of ten is that they just woke up the next day and kept going. They just kept working, kept being outside, just kept putting that foot forward. Some people wouldn't even, don't even know exactly what they're going to do or what they're doing, but they put, they wake up and they're saying, I'm going to put my best foot forward. So those are usually the people who change this world in whatever way you want to say positive or negative. So who's outside to me is I wanted to set up a, a podcast and an interview platform to, to talk to all the people, big or small, who shape and change this, this earth, whether it be in music, Health, whatever, and mm -hmm. it has so gotten you're taken not over. Like strictly music, you you tap into everyone that's like just right, right. So I, like I've done, and yeah. So we did we did like um, uh, a LMAO pod tape, and I, I first podcast is the coin phrase I think pod tape where I just drop a collection like my own little mixtape or interviews we did, and we dropped like the LMAO pod tape with like comedians like Rudy Rush and Traff Q, etc. And where I talk to them and they talk about their positions or how they got to where they're at yeah. and how they feel about the comic game and, and how it's changed from social media and how the new stars are versus the old gen. Mm -hmm. A lot of my show, too, is a lot. It may seem like old gen versus new gen okay. conversations. Think but, so? but the reason why I like to talk and aim it, even directly like that, is to so they can see... People who are working and grinding need to see what the people who got their thought process were. Because okay. everything is going to change. That makes sense. But the thought process to success stays the same. So mm -hmm. if you hear this person like, okay, he, well, he did get up every day. Yeah, because if you watch a lot of interviews, they highlight a lot of things artists say from years ago that's still relevant now. Yes, so yes, yes, yes. Interviews, I feel yes, like, last forever. Yes. And when it comes to... The, also, the, the Who's Outside section of the interviews, the reason why I like to talk to a lot of the up-and-coming rappers is when you, you never know. That's the one thing about hip-hop, right? We never know who's going to be who. We don't know who's going to be a mega star tomorrow. Right. And I like to talk to all of these guys, so they're all important, because but I think, think talking to them at their amateur stage or their raw stage before they become this mega giant and their mind changes and shapes to mm -hmm. being a millionaire and being a new platinum artist, etc., hearing how they think at a raw function and getting that interview footage and seeing how their brain transitions after oh, is a okay. big thing to be able to see so we can all glimpse see to see. in the artist. Yeah, and these are like little paths to being able to get on. Okay. It's really, I think that there's no pamphlet to getting on and getting high or doing anything successful, uh -huh. but there's tips and hints. And I think... Yeah, there's no pamphlet. That's, yeah, and I think that's what we could do here. Like, that's my goal. So, how do you feel about the music scene overall right now? Ooh... Music scene overall in general. In New York City, let's say in the tri-state area. New York City that's music scene overall. I am anybody who knows me. I live in uh, North Carolina. I travel up and down the coast all the time. Anybody knows me. I talk shit about New York being number one right now all day because I think we worked hard. I think there was a long time when the South had their run, and I was in the South, and everybody was talking trash, and you know the Migos and everybody. Uh, these guys were just had the, a wave of energy and they were like, yeah, Atlanta, this is how you take over the game. And then, and, and then, you know, the change functions after. Um, Chicago has their run. And I just feel like New York, our time is now. The ball has come back and I love, man, the whole drill scene, my favorite artist is like Fabio. Uh, favorite artist? Some of my favorite in the New York City drill scene, 
We're going to get into that. We're going to yeah. get into yeah. who's the favorite and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, do you feel like when they say, oh, New Yorkers stole it from Chicago? Like, what do you think about that? Hmm. Okay, so I think, okay, so I think waves, I think music, and everything is, if you understand, just like fashion, everybody kind of came up with a style from somebody else, right? Yeah. And I think that people have argued that the right and the wrong of this, but my belief is that Chicago and their rap style mm-hmm. came from actually the same, if you, Tom, when Philly was rapping in the YouTube era, and Philly, Reed Dollars and all these guys were rapping in the camera, and they had this kind of aggressive style in the camera. Um, go fast forward, go to the Chicago drill scene with JoJo and them, they put mm-hmm. it on wax. I think it's the same kind of Philly raw style, and mm-hmm. Philly guys got that from the smack, which ever drainage from New York. So if you ask me, the Chicago drill scene kind of originates from a New York mini school of drill. So yeah. I think it's all just full circle. So no, I don't think, I think it's a different form and I don't think it's copy. And I think it's a different form of drill and um, same reality that we all been talking. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah. You think, I mean, yeah, I don't think, I don't I mean, think, I, I, I don't, don't feel like it's copying. I feel like we definitely added our own sauce to it. Yeah. But I wouldn't. I don't know like where the influence started. I wouldn't sit here and say like, yo, I, I didn't see the Philly people doing it. I definitely started seeing when Chicago was doing it. So. Yeah, man. I and I think it's important to say Chicago. Not Chicago created a mm-hmm. very very important uh, music scene to themselves, and that helped a lot of their artists get to where they are today. Yeah. And I don't take anything from that because I think it was a subgenre that hadn't been created. I take mm-hmm. nothing from Chicago. I think they're the originators of a drill sound that's heard Did today. They're originators. I think you can say that I they are the originators of the coin sound of drill. Yeah, on wax drill, whatever we term of drill. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can say that they're the original on wax drillers, high intensity beat, rapping about a certain beef caliber in a disc form. Yeah, definitely. I don't think it was purposely. I think they was literally just rapping like their circumstances and stuff like that. I don't think it was like intentional, if that makes sense. Well, you know well what, what about? I agree. No, I agree. I'm not. I'm not. I don't think that. I, no, I don't think they were I young kids. Like I don't think that they woke up. It's it, intentional. Artists wake up like, yo, I'm gonna be a drill artist. I feel like out there, it was more so a lifestyle. Well, because it, it hadn't been created yet. It but I feel like they was already living yet. it, and they're just rapping their truth. Ooh. Whereas to here, Ooh. it's more so of a trend. Ooh. Oh. Uh, mm. I mean, I'm not going to say trend. it's trending for everyone, but I think that a lot of people that are drill Okay, so artists here's my thing. Here's, uh, here's are drill artists because it's trending. I are, a lot are of they drill art? But here's my thing, though. Well, they start drill. They start drill. Well, here's my thing, though. When you say that, though, when a drill artist and drill scene, right? Drill scene has to make up a body of people, right? It's not going to be just one and two people that make mm-hmm. up a scene. But once, once, and once one or two people go, everyone else follows suit. That's how the scene comes. At first, it was one person. Then it- we came a group of people. And, and also, too, look, look, can we talk about it, too, is style of music. If an artist decides to say they're going to make a decide like a style of drill rap, they've already, I think that right there is conscious enough to be able to say that that's its own music. Because if they want to be, make Bible music, Religious music. What would be Bible music? Religious Y'all music. Week. Religious music. If okay. they wanted to make, if they wanted to make music they about anything else, they would have to else. find some religious artist, right, and try to see how it even started before they jump into that lane, right? You just gotta do your research first, right? That's all I'm saying. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Are you saying? That there's inf- so you're saying you're getting is that there's influence. The reason these artists, because you're trying to, make, are you saying that the art these artists are waking up saying that I'm gonna make a drill sound in rap, even though, because they're influenced by the music only and not the lifestyle. Yeah. Mm. For New Yorkers. Mm. For, for sure. Mm. How well you? Huh? I feel like this happened, huh? You like it's, it? There's some that that are going into the. 
So it yeah, I'm about to say, like, when you interviewing... That's your life. But nah, but um, mm-hmm. what I'm saying is, you interview people just like me, right? When you hear people's songs and then you meet them, ain't it a whole different vibe? Yeah. Okay, so... And then when you say, oh, how long you gonna do the drill shit? They be like, I don't wanna do this, it's just hot right now, but I'm about to step into this. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's all I'm saying. Drill is a style of music that can be done, like, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Don't some artists come out rapping aggressively and then they turn into like auto tune music, right? When they try to go like pop, mainstream. They start to do different versions of, for broader audience, right? Yeah. Like artists change to get broader audience for broader markets. Everybody knows that drill market isn't that big. It's, it's obvious. You can't, you, you're not going to, it's going to be hard to be. You can't be a mega drill star. You, 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 you're not you going to be. Or so if anybody's thinking that, you can't. A mega drill star? Whoa, I you mean. You can't. Who? Name them. Well, what do you, what's a mega drill star? Dr- Drake. Who could be a Drake doing drill? Nobody. Can't it's so be. early Can't though, because be. who knows what Pop Smoke career could have been? Who knows hmm. who is it's so early. So it's too early to tell? It's so early. Pop Smoke right there. Pop Smoke, rest in peace. Was is gonna a, make is, that mark, you feel like? He was he, he was, was breaking the doors again, now. Again, we we agree that you I know we He was breaking the doors now. I agree. And there's not too many of them who you we would say who have that same marketability, but Pop mm. Smoke, if there, if there is one to have it, pop, and what Pop Smoke was able to show is that yeah, that it could so get to a big that, audience. So being that he's no longer with us, what do you, what do you think the fate of the drill scene will be? Oh, um, I think, I think it'll have its run two, three, four years. What? I think it'll do another two, three, four years. Yeah, I don't yeah. Think so. Time, time, time. No, it has to. It still has to burn out. It has to get I the people. The- it hasn't. Some people still haven't heard it yet. You have yeah. to give them a chance it's to hear it. It's drill in every language now. Yeah. It's UK drill. It's yes. Australian drill. Yes. It's yes. Italian drill. It's yes. like a Spanish drill. Yes. Like, I feel like everybody two, heard it. Two years minimum, four years if we get some. I think that's a reach. <laughs> well, here's what I'm saying. Would you have said that if Pop Smoke was alive right now, thriving? I had to see what he was going to do. Like, because he didn't... And that's what I'm saying as far as it's hard for a drill artist to be a megastar because drill is a lot of conflict, right? Cosmo yeah. got held back because of conflict, nothing else. You know what I'm saying? So even trying to break those barriers, still avoiding street legal issues, all that shit, it's kind of hard to even excel that far. That's what I'm saying Like as far as a drill artist being a megastar. Once you start problems, problems... Okay. Can I? All right, so I really, I, I got to go there. I got to go there. Even though people going to hate that, I, I got to go Don't there to bring it up. But let's go to it. <laughs> I okay. hate even talking about him, right? But let's just go there. Your, your boy, Snitch Nine, gets on, does his thing. He starts to blow up pre-rat days. He goes, does his thing. Okay. He starts to catch on, right? He's blowing, making, making charts, right? Okay. And drill like videos, especially Kuda, these are drill like, if not intensity song, drill like mm-hmm. videos. Okay. 6ix9ine had shit loads of legal issues, some of the worst, right? Even early on. And he got locked up. Hold on. Ebro goes on air one day and reads the letter that he got from the law enforcement about 6ix9ine, and he reads the letter, and the law enforcement states that they were going to let Danny go because he had reached such a pinnacle in his career and they thought he was going to move away. But things have gotten too much and it's outside his hands. And Ebro reads this on air. And my whole point premise is, is that even though you're saying that they come with a lot of drama and they come with a lot of things, maybe, but for the ones that are stars and the ones that can prove to be worth it, all of none of that will be relevant and none of that will matter because the stardom oh. will break through, period. And... I think Pops, I hate, and that's why I hate to bring up the guy, but Pop Smoke and him were only close to real mainstream success that we can really touch and see and be able to end the culture. Facts. Facts. Um, I don't think, I think even if the legal stuff didn't happen, I don't think 6 9 would have, like, I don't know, like, to me, he was doing... We were 
was over him though. And six nine also got that peak because of the extra shit online. It, his marketing was drama. You know what but I'm saying? Remember we said Versus the you? pop smoke market was creativity sample. Like pop smoke gave us so many varieties of marketing rather than where six nine was. I'm a troll. I'm a drop. I'm a troll. I'm a drop. And I feel like that's where we lack right now in the drill scene. It's the trolling and dropping. It's like, besides that though, what else? You know what I'm saying? I agree. I agree. I agree. I think. I think. Does the drill scene lack creativity? Yes. yes. Uh, agree. One hundred percent. All right. I'm glad we agreed on that. <laughs> okay. So, what's your call? All right. So another topic: Jersey artists slept on by New York City. What do you think about that? Ooh. Let me ask you, Mr. Chicken. You like Mr. Chicken? Yeah. You like Albi Al? I'm not a super fan. I like, I like um, Beto. I like, um, I don't know that much Jersey artists. I ain't got one. And, and this is my question. I'm getting it to them, They're the sixth borough. The, damn, they're, they're the close. They're, Jersey City is closer to Manhattan than the Bronx. And I think that they, we just, I think that there's artists in Jersey City have been co-signed, have, uh, man, have large amounts of content, shows growth in their content. Artists like uh, Cremie from Designer Boys, all the way, the Coily list Ray can go. Coily Ray is from Jersey. I'm just not Coily Ray is from Jersey. Coily Ray is from Jersey. No, but this is what we're saying. We, we talked about that, right? In the time we was Wild. out there, right? When we, we was Fetty, Fetty, uh, oh, Sue Surf. You know, they, they, they have artists. Yeah. They have, man. Jersey has artists. Again, Are they you, had, you, you, you I just feel like lack of support. But I ain't gonna lie, when I speak to Jersey artists, they make it seem like it's the trenches out there. I feel like we in the trenches in Brooklyn, so they make it sound worse. Like I ain't gonna lie, when I be talking to Jersey artists, it's, it's a little. It, it, it's. I don't want. I don't. I hate to say which one is more trenchy because everybody has yeah, their I don't times. Yeah, I'm getting to a but, lot, but but Newark is definitely trenchy. It's definitely has its sides, but they definitely. Jersey has a but scene and they have a lot of creativity. Me, and that's why I think that when you see a chicken, we, a surf, a fetty, it's like, how could we ignore? And they right there. And there's so no, much talent. I don't talent. feel like ignoring them. I feel like they're tired of reaching their hand. And that's what I'm saying. If I got to reach my hand to my city constantly, 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 now I got to reach to a whole nother city constantly, constantly, constantly. It's like, at this point, I'm just going to keep grinding until it comes. And I feel like that's what, I feel like that's just a tri-state area thing, though. Like, we don't like accent for Do you bring, do you bring Jersey on, or do you have a lot of Jersey artists on your platform? Have you had a few? I'm posting a lot more now. Like, since I did Chicken Interview, I'm not gonna lie, like, a lot of Jersey artists been reaching out. So I've been finding out more, connecting with more. Um, I've been going to shows out there now, trying to see, like, who's hot and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get into that scene. I just found out that they got a blog page just like talking to town, what it sounds like. So I think that's lit. I followed them or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's no like real way to find Jersey artists. You have to just go out there and see yeah. what's what. Yeah. But I feel like Jersey artists scare us away when they be like, yo, it's really bad out there. I, I, it's like, damn, I don't even want to go there. So, Whoa, all right, I so, so, all right, so then also let's, let's, let's really talk about it too. If Jersey, if especially when you talk about the drill scene, right in New York drill, yeah. if you talk about some of Jersey, Jersey started the peak of the drill. Yo, come on, and then these guys, and then Jersey has so many different creatives. And I think about New York. Here's was how I feel for artists, creators, everybody. The reason why I think about more about Jersey is that when we think about going places, I know you probably like where I'm gonna have an interview. Where, where's a new place setting I could get? Everybody, we need to expand to Jersey because of it's another option and just being another form of creativity. Mm -hmm. And I think about just like watching, I see uh, NY Drill, when NY Drill, when all these artists post, uh, NY Drill posts every song that comes out every day. Mm -hmm. NY Drill posts a song and I know this. It's always, you know, a feature, maybe two t kid, two dudes from the same team or a two, one dude from someone team and another dude from another hood. But it's never branched off somebody from Jersey, somebody from South Carolina, somebody well, from North Carolina. They have been, they haven't been a lot. 
but I see artists are trying to. The most pe- the most person I see do the most New York features is Dado though. Like Dado done tapped in with almost every lit New York person I know. Dado's the only artist who stood me up, by the way. But go ahead, look, go ahead. I just wow, want okay. no. Go ahead, no. Go ahead. No, because <laughs> I'm just thinking of artists that are like connecting over the the bridge. Yeah, I know. Only him. do you? Do, that I, oh, and I chicken, see. And chicken. And chicken. Like that have like real new. Oh, turf. The Nick Bucks, but that's years later. Nick Bucks been rapping for a long yes. time. Do so you, it's like. Do you feel like all right? So, so, so do you feel like New York has the hottest artists in the country right now? Is that what we're saying? No. You no don't think shade, these are us? You don't think these are some of the hottest artists in the country right now? Who? Fabio, two two G's, Chef G, Ron Suno, hottest artist in the Dusty country. Dusty Locaine. Country? Nah. Damn, why you doing this to me? Like, <laughs> no shade, but like country, that's big. Like, yo, but like, all right, here's what people, here's I, I, for when me, people, it's but like, like, let's break it down. Go to the states. I'm in these states. I, I go. Let's go to the states and go down. How many, what state has this many names that we can name that are rocking with decent to good, however you rated I feel music like we that is feel like that cause prematurely we live here, selling? Though. I feel like we feel like that because we live here, though. I feel like in North Carolina, it's, it's um, before the baby, now it's Tusi, now it's Center for Vegas. Um, Three. I'm, I don't live there, so no, I don't know. I know. But like, here's what I'm saying, though. When you check in these other markets, though, most markets. When I'm checking much, these other markets, you see, I'm looking for artists that's under two C. Yeah. Like when people come here, automatically hit Chef Chef and Fabio. It's so many other artists under these people, right? Agreed. 100%. They have to get there first. Agreed. Where do I find those people? You know what I'm saying? Like we Agreed. don't know. Agreed. So for us to say, yo, New York got the hottest out of all, it's like we know that because we live here. It's but, artists under those artists. But here's that, what I'm saying though. Me? You see how you said Chef and Fabio because they're already at the level they got to? Yeah. Why, when you go to these places, you cannot name as many names as you name as a chef of Fabio? I like could, though. You think that as many places, and they have the same number? Like and again, Atlanta, because- Atlanta, um, and Atlanta too. Texas. Like, it's mad other places. Texas is hot. Texas has an like, extreme damn, artist. But it's like, damn, how could you say that, though? It's like, damn. Like, but again, though, I'm, I, I'm just again, I, I, I love, again, so let's get, let's get, look, first off, North Carolina's got, besides the baby and, and the stunner for Vegas, um, two C two times, and, and everybody in the BDB camp. The, That's North Carolina. North Carolina yeah, has a, a, a the Maury and all these, a whole different sound See? of me, like, music. I don't know, I forget about that. But let's now let, let's really go to it. When you start talking about Florida, right? Florida, young and Ace and them, young and Ace and those yeah. guys, right? Yes. What? Young and Ace, and I love Young and Ace. Young Kofi, and Ace, Fujiano, Hot Boy, um, Spot 'em, Got 'em, Fredo Bang. I think Fredo is from Chicago. But yeah, like you think that those artists are hotter than the five we named? You think those city, those artists are hotter than those guys right there? Honestly, I feel like this is never gonna end, bro. Okay, go, go next question. I, I just, I think here's what I think. Here's just what I think. I think that when you talk about you know how many music people read this beatbox, like. Like I'm just trying to say, like that, I'm that's not one. It's, it's right a record. Now. It's right? one record. And it's one record. Everybody was fucking with um, Big record. Drip. Like big his drip. big his beatbox and his Big Drip. Bobby threw a hat it's in like, the air and was on movies with Kevin oh. Hart afterward. Okay, but I'm just saying, like, we not gonna sit here and say like I don't. I don't feel like we got the hottest artists in the country. I feel like we have the like strongest hustlers, if 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 that's even a term. The but strongest hustlers. I feel like once once we hustle in New York, we excel anywhere else. Yes. So agree. And that's and that that could be also the perspective, I think. I think what it takes and what it has to do to get hot the, in New the York. Spot him, got him, nigga. Thousand people remix that shit, right? But he just dropped a song after that. He was pushing that song for damn near yes. what, nine months? Yes. Yes. So like it's yes. a lot easier to get that yes. branch off. Whereas yes. to here, we gotta keep hustling. 
Yes. So I, that's why I feel like we're stronger as far as the hustle. And that's what makes us stronger when we excel everywhere else. But and also too, and, and also too, uh, do you not feel like, and, and this is my opinion. Yeah. And after this, we're going to go on. We're going to go. Yeah. More. My question to you, though, is do you not think that the brands that these are, some of these are, artists in general, Chef G, Ron Suno, the ones that are, the brands, brands that they're building. Okay, do well. you not do you not think that the brands that they're building are some of the more already tailored for bigger mass media markets? Like yeah. remember when the baby popped and we was like, okay, his brand is already ready for big mass media. Mm -hmm. Do you not feel like these guys are more angled and ready for big mass media versus I like Julio, like, spot them, got them dudes in I Florida? I feel like that's they are. Argument. That's what I mean. They hustled to get that right, but I feel like out here. Once we're stamped, we're comfortable. As far as like, we're not reaching out no more. Yes. Once our foundation set yes. and we're generating money yes. and we all situated, yes. we're not reaching out no more. We're just yes. gonna keep working on what we already got going on. Once yes. we got a system, we definitely stay on our system. But I feel like out there they be yearning for more. Like I feel like out there it's just like, I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna keep going. Even though Yo, and I really just got to state it. I have to hate, I just got to leave this one more time, too, is <laughs> that being around in these different areas. Adam, you know we've been on the road. We go into North Carolina, South Carolina. Uh, we go down to VA, Atlanta. Um, yo, besides Atlanta, not Atlanta, but Georgia. Besides Atlanta. Atlanta's, of course, a different Georgia. market. Okay. But Georgia, when you get around these areas, a lot of these artists don't know half the thing a lot of these that's no. why i said we the strongest hustlers i feel like man man it. like yo there's some dude this dude's brands who are not ready no i get it because i go to the and i see it too like it's so much opportunity just sitting next to them and they're just like skipping past it i guess i don't fucking know where i sit here we're like yo it's over there yo it's over there yo it's over there yes that's how I, that's how i feel like we're the strongest hustlers yes, yes. And again, Brooklyn, just like Brooklyn has a lot of artists, I think you take some of them Brooklyn artists that you, like, like some people don't, never talk about. Uh, I'll keep that healthy chill. Um, even going to, to, like, some artists, like, in the Bronx, um, you, that, okay. it, like, it go to, like, or go to, like, Fergie, even going back to, like, a Fergie baby. These dudes, if they were in Midwest, or they did these things and they would, blow up. They would Fergie they would if Fergie Bay would have had the cookout he had in Harlem in the Midwest or in down south somewhere, he'd be a megastar because he'd be a hometown hero. So I think that that's why when I say the importance is because when you look at like a brand like a Fergie Baby or even a healthy chill, these dudes are ready now. They might not have all the, the streams and all the public on them. And, and that's because it's a music game. They got, you got to get the records. That's just the game. Yeah. But some of these dudes' brands are so ready that it's crazy to me that they're on the sideline versus when you go to other states and other places. To me, it, it, it's just the inconsistency. Like, mm. your team could be A1, yes. but if y'all not consistent... All right, but before we close out, you know, who's outside? You know who outside. So who do you think is top five in the city right now, underground? Mm. All right, so I'm gonna definitely split it between girls and guys. Okay. Top five females. I don't care who you are. If you pay attention to the underground scene, you cannot not see Nada Dancer, Young Devin, Dream Doll, off the rip. Okay, that's top three. Billy. Billy B. I love K Goddess, yo. I think K Goddess is a brand too, man. I know he's gonna say her. I love K Goddess, bro. I think she's a brand. But like, I was, I was just watching her page the other day. She's been the most consistent female artist. She, and, and it's like, you, and it's like, too. When we talk about music business, music is nice and everything, but she understands we here to work and sell and make, get consumers and to sell products, and she understands this as a whole. I, and I, I, I like K Goddess. The records. That's not my opinion, but I'm gonna definitely say I love K Goddess as a brand. That's brand itself. Yeah, K Goddess is a brand view. Okay. Um, top five voice. dudes. Uh, let's go with uh, <laughs> controversial. Say, let's go with um, number one. I'm gonna have to go with yo number one. If we being real, I I, I just love all the drillies and, and all these dudes. I love all of the drills. I love K Flock. I love D Thing. I love 
Man. I think Young Zay is good. I think Young Zay can rap. Um, Young Zay was like borderline to me. Borderline. I think he puts on for the Bronx well. I feel like he's so polished. He could be a mainstream artist like tomorrow. You want to know what it is though? Zay really raps. And when you rapping that shit, that shit sometimes will come out hard in the club. And niggas be wanting to, they they correlate the club with numbers that would be streaming. And it, it gets jumbled up sometimes. So, but I mean, again, I think, I think Zay's good. I think Zay good. Zay, I, th- I got K Flock a D thing. Um, Two more. Dang. Let me go yeah, to. Keep it up town. Like of course, that's what I said. No, I'm a, I definitely know. I know. I, I gotta know, go. I gotta go. Yo, bro, if you really, if you, if you listening, like, yo, two six AR man. God damn, he fucking came out of nowhere. 26AR is like just jumped into one of my favorites because it's consistency. Fuck. Um, Last one. Damn. So many motherfuckers about to DM me. So many motherfuckers about to DM me. I I know I miss so many. Uh, Who you been hearing all summer? Like all getting into summer. Who you keep hearing? Yeah, bro, I like Mulak G's too. I like Mulak like Jeez. just kept it all up there. I like, like wow. Mulak like Jeez. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a Bronx dude, bro. I'm a Bronx dude. I'm a Bronx dude. I'm uptown. I love it. I love, yo, but you, because listen, because you said also underground, because I just want to say this. The top dudes, yeah. of course, we, I can't name Fabio Chef and these dudes. No, but and, uh, it's when mad we talk, But when you talk about, did you, are you going to sleep on K Flock? K Flock. K Flock, D Thing. K Flock and D Thing on the Panda. I like. Mad other people. O- OP. So wait, hold on. OP is top five as far as image and brand. OP needs two, three more records for real. Yeah. Move Dolly. But and you just said Tay Goddess for her brand too. So come on, let's talk about impact influence. He got Lil Scrap with Bobby Schmurder, like. But that's what I'm saying. The OP impact is somebody who can be in it. Record, he doesn't have to. In the right. I, a K Flock a link with a little scrap. Like, come on. Again, OP is such a. Uh, the way I just look, watch OP's brand, I think OP is going to be way more successful in the industry just being his brand. I don't know about the music. I'm not sure about the hits. Well, that's his goal anyway, sure so. Hits. I think he's just really good as a music brand. I don't, I don't know if OP needs. I see. You see what he did with Lil Scrap? Like, I, I like the way he moves people. I, I like the way he helps brands. I like the way he cross counters. Um, but I, I don't know if the music and being, a, it, it's not, everybody's not meant to be the next Drake. But I think OP could be very successful in this game in general as a brand. Mm-hmm. I don't think he plans on rapping forever, but he said that in an interview. OP, right, yeah. I, 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 I don't, I think he's, he, he understands the game. I don't, if you understand the game, I don't see why would you not want to be behind the scenes. That's just my personal opinion. That's why I was behind the scenes. Behind yeah, scenes. I mean, that's why I, I, I'm just behind the scenes, dude. But yeah. Yeah, Yo, yeah. so I appreciate that's y'all. who's hot top five slash ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You might see us back together again one day, right? Yes, yes, so yes. So people to find you and find your page, platform, follow. Or yes, right? yeah. So artists tap in with me. Uh, Jungle Ty, who's outside? Who's outside is the platform on IG, on YouTube. Who's outside podcast? Um, interviews out now. Knuckles Brim got blackballed by CJ for a million dollars. Question mark. Max B interview out now. Lay off.